Okay, so now that you've learned how to go through and create your own first prediction and use some of these tools in uh, Azure for cleaning, uh, summarizing, analyzing data, I want to walk you through exactly how Azure Machine Learning Studio maps back to what we did in Excel in this Excel multivariate prediction chapter where you learn how to create a prediction calculator in Excel from regression results. So uh, you can skip this video if you feel like you've got it already. Uh, but this is for those who are still struggling to map those things between each other. So anyway, come here to the experiment that we've been working on. Now you'll notice I've simplified mine a bit. Feel free to pause the video and make yours look exactly like mine. You might still have the summarized data pill or normalized data pill or something like that. But I, all I want here are the most basic things that I need to come up with a predictive model and to evaluate it. All right, so remember that every pill can be right-clicked on and we can view or visualize the outputs of that pill. So here, our first one is our bikebuyers.csvr data set. This is, we, uh, we saved a copy of that Excel file as a CSV, and then we uploaded it here in the previous video. So this just shows you the data. So the way this maps, obviously, back in Excel is that right here, this is our worksheet. So think of this pill, the first one, the .csv, as the worksheet in Excel. Now, as you'll learn later on in this course, uh, there's other ways to pull data in through like an import data pill from a SQL server, but uh, we'll get to that later if, uh, uh, if you're curious. Next, we have a select columns pill. So as a reminder, we launched this and it says, which columns do you want to use in your analysis? So recall that this includes not just the independent variables, but the dependent variable as well. So how does this map back to Excel? So in Excel, we want to run our uh, regression. We go to data, we go to the data analysis tool pack add-in, we go to regression, we hit OK. And the first thing it wants is to know where the Y and the X is. So remember the Y is a single variable, X range is one or more variables. So essentially what we're putting here into these two boxes is the exact same as what's being asked for right here, only it wants all of them together. We don't yet need to specify which one is the Y and which ones are the X's. So that's the role of the select columns and data set pill is to simply mark what our variables are. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in here in Excel at the same time and say we want purchase bike numeric. And for the X range, remember in Excel, a rule is all the columns have to be contiguous. So I'm going to select from home owner over to marital status, and they're all right next to each other, so that works. So essentially, I've told it where to find the X's and the Y's. Okay. Oh, and let's check the box for labels so it knows the first row is not part of the data set, but just part of the labels. Okay. So back here in Excel, this is where it deviates now, where what we do in Azure is different. In Excel, we came back here and simply said, where do you want to put the output? We click over here and we say, let's stick it somewhere up here. And we are going to hit OK, and then it'll be done. Now, in that case, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> As a reminder, what's done here is it's generated a set of coefficients based on all 1,000 records. So if we were to make predictions based on this, uh, we might actually be overstating how accurate it truly is. So let me remind you what I mean by that. So uh, let's insert a record here. And if you remember, the way that we calculate a prediction is by taking these coefficients. Let's overlay them over the top here of our variables for the paste transpose. Whoops, didn't mean to do that home paste transpose and then let's have a prediction I'm going to call this scored label like Azure does machine learning studio so the way we come up with this is we're going to say this is equals a sum product of these coefficients it's f4 of that so it stays on the same line comma multiplied by these actual x values plus the intercept right here. F4 that one as well. And enter. Okay, here's our scored labels. So let's insert one more and say this. Uh, basically, if we want to convert this into whether or not I purchased a bike, I'd round that up or down. So I'm going to make this my accuracy column. What I'm going to say here is that this equals uh, round that cell to zero decimal places. So here's if I round up or down, here's basically what I'm saying. I'm predicting a no here and a yes for these. So here's what I want to do. Uh, 
this is an accuracy. This is just a rounded score label. I want to take this and say if this predicted score equals the actual purchase bike numeric. So I'm going to say if round equals the value here in purchase bike numeric, put in a 1, otherwise put in a 0. So here, now what this means is that my prediction is accurate. So this turns into a 0. They actually did not purchase a bike. It's a 1 because it's a it's a, a true uh, negative. Down here, I predicted they wouldn't, sorry, I predicted right here that they would purchase a bike, but they didn't. We call that a false positive. These, uh, let's see these next three, I predicted they wouldn't purchase a bike and they didn't, another true negative. Here I predicted they would purchase a bike because those are over 0.5 and they did, those are true positives. So down at the bottom, my accuracy is going to equal design total row the average of this cell right here. So 62.8% accurate. Now this estimate of how accurate my predictions are is actually inflated. There is a chance that I am overfitting my model and you'll learn more about what that means in the next chapter but it means that my prediction is too custom fit to the data that I have. If I really want to know how good my weights are that I generated up here, then what I need to do is predict them for new customers who aren't in this data set. New people who come in off the street uh, and let's plug in their actual values of the x variables and then let's wait and see if they actually purchase a bike and see if I was right or not. So we have a tendency to overfit when the weights we train are too custom fit to the data set that they don't apply well to new data. So here's what, uh, what we do in the midterm, we did nothing to account for that because you based your prediction calculator right off these coefficients. However, or, and we did nothing to estimate our true accuracy. However, over in Azure, the way we get around that is we use a split data pill and we say send 70% of the data over here and use that to train the model and 30% of the data over here and let's pretend we don't know whether or not they purchased a bike. Let's pretend these are new people coming off the street and then let's see if they did purchase, let's see what we predict for those. And see that way we're predicting for 300 people that are different from the 700 that we trained our weights on. And so that's how we prevent or simulate an environment where we come up with predictions, but we test their accuracy on new people. So even though this data coming right out of here of, of output two from split data, it has their purchase bike numeric right here. It's actually ignoring it. It's not using it all. So down here in the score model, I visualize this. Here's our scored label, our prediction of whether or not they'll purchase a bike. Even though it does know what their, uh, whether or not they purchased it, it's ignoring that when it uses a scored label because this scored label is based on coefficients that were trained over here on this 700. Let me show you what that'll look like in Excel. So uh, back to Excel. <clears throat> what I want to do is change my data set. I'm going to grab my last 300. So let's see, row one starts on row four. I want to go down to row 705 then. Right there. And let's separate these records from the rest. Um, you know what I better do is get rid of my total row. And I think I'm going to put it in a new... Let's change this. I'm going to call this one... Uh, training data. And I'll make a new one called testing data. So over here on training data, I'm going to cut control, no, not Z, control X and paste them over here. And let's come back later. I'm going to delete these columns for now. And we're going to uh, run our predictions and a new accuracy score off of these. So I'm going to copy my column headers. there put it over here the testing data great so let's come back here to the training data now and simulate what that split data pill is doing all I have to do is redo my prediction model my regression model but this time it's only based on the first 700 now the only other thing that I'm not doing that the split data pill does is I'm not randomly selecting the second the, the 700 I simply took the last 300 and I moved it to a different place but in reality the split data pill it's randomly selecting even though I'm using a random seed, so it 
starts on the same random point every time. It's still randomly selecting that 700. So anyway, let's ignore that or relax that assumption for a minute and go back to the data. Now let's open up um, our data analysis again. Regression, OK. Uh, let's just change these. And so our data no longer starts on row 1. Remember, I came in here and I, uh, I moved it down. So we're actually starting on row 3 now. So I'm going to change this to M3 to M703. Is that right, or is it 704? Now I'm losing my mind. Let's find out here. So let's start here on M3, go down to 704. Yeah, all right. So over here, similarly, let's change these variables to D3 to D704. So now we're using 70% of the data. Let's output on the exact same spot. Uh, well, no, let's actually, let's, never mind. Let's go below it so you can see how different they are. Let's move this over here and I'll select right here beneath it to output the data. So run it. Our R squared uh, actually goes up a little bit, notice. All that means is that with the 700 people that we analyzed, it was just slightly easier uh, than it was with the entire 1000 to predict purchase bike numeric. We expect minor changes like that because we're, we've got a slightly different data set, so no big deal. But let's take a look at these coefficients of both models real quick. I'm going to bold those, turn them into numbers. Okay, so the intercept has changed, 0.64 to 0.84. Marital status looks like it's the same. Gender numeric, gender is a little bit more important down here. Income, I don't want to add all the decimals to even find, well, okay, here we go. 0 0.503, looks like it's about the same. Children's a bit different, so they changed slightly. All right, no problem. What I want to do now is copy what's happening over here. So this trained model, it's using this linear regression pill. This is the mathematical formula. Now, where is Excel using this? Back here when I clicked uh, data and regression, the linear regression formula is built in to this tool. It's the only option for this tool. Over here, it's separated into a different pill because as you're about to learn in two chapters later in the book, there's actually a whole bunch seven or eight different options here for the formula that I can use. But Excel only has, whoops, only has one option for linear regression. So it's built into this view right here. That's where that comes from. But uh, over here in uh, Azure, train model is like clicking the OK button back on that other screen in Excel. It's like hitting OK right here. Train model says grab linear regression, grab those 700 records, which we selected right here and right here and then calculate the regression weights and feed those weights here into score model. Okay, so this score model pill is what I did right here when I calculated this score right here, the scored label. So I did this manually. You watched me do it in the video where I took these weights and I multiplied it by the actual values and came up with a scored label. That's what the score model pill is doing, except it's actually using just, it's using a different set. It's taking these weights right here from... Uh, let me just go ahead and move all these over to the other page to testing data. I'll put them right here. Let me insert, insert. Okay. So in Azure, it uses these weights that were generated from over here on the training data, and it's applying these to these 300 records for the scoring. Oh, uh, come on. Uh, paste, transpose. No, you're not going to let me. Let's try it one more time. Paste. There we go. Transpose. I think I must have done cut. Okay. So now let's generate the scored labels, labels just for these 300 and not for all 1,000. So this is going to equal... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and select all on that. No, I don't want the top part. I just want this on down. Let's insert a table over that. The advantage is that that's, means it's going to auto-copy my formula all the way down for me. Okay, so let's say some product. Let's grab our coefficients like we did before. F4, so it stays on that row. Comma. Actual values. Close parenthesis plus. Let's grab the, co the uh, intercept right there. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot on the intercept. I got an F4, that one too, to keep it on the row. 
Okay, perfect. Okay, so now let's determine the accuracy based on these labels. So let's start with the round function. Round this to the nearest zero decimal places. Okay, there's our prediction. So now let's put in our if statement to see if it's accurate. If round equals this one, then a one, otherwise a zero. Perfect. So what I have now is just like what I did before, but I'm using the coefficients from my 70% training data, and I'm testing those coefficients on, uh, I'm calculating accuracy based on the 30% holdout testing data. That's exactly what's going on right here. 70% goes here to come up with coefficients. 30% goes down here to come up with scores. So you take a look at that on Azure. These scored labels right here are based on the training data coefficients coming out over there. Okay, I think you get it. So back here in our calculator, I'm going to scroll to the bottom. Let's add in our table total row and change this to an average. So much better indication of my actual accuracy, 57.25% when I split the data and train on a different set of data than I test on. So if you remember before, when I ran this over here, our accuracy was, when I ran, when I ran it based on the entire 1,000 records, when I trained the data on the same data that I tested the data from, my accuracy was higher. It was 62-ish uh, or 67 or something like that percent. But by splitting the data, I'm less likely to overfit my model, and I'm more likely to come up with a prediction, or at least I'm more likely to come up with an accuracy score that more truly represents what will happen when I apply my training uh, to new data. Okay, so the very last point I want to make uh, back here in our model. So we've gone through what every pill does and how it maps back to what we did in Excel. The only thing left is this evaluate model. So let me visualize the res results here. This is where I get um, my R squared or coefficient of determination and uh, RMSE and these evaluation metrics. So it's a little out of order with what you're used to in Excel. But if you remember, you probably have already made the connection. We got all of this back when we first ran the regression right here. Here's our R squared, our, uh, let me expand these out here. Um, standard error doesn't give me all those same metrics, but basically this is my evaluation of how good my model is. So I hope this helps. hope everything makes sense in here now, what we're doing. Um, and uh, good luck with the next chapter.